Hey guys, Dr. Chris here, Philosophical PhD in Amiga Technology. Today I'm going to be working on the Amiga 3000. This one comes to us from Mr. Chris. Not this Mr. Chris, but another Mr. Chris. Anyway, it's in for a recap, an amber fix, potentiometer adjustment, and a clock fix. So let's get into it and see how it goes. This is post Rona Chris. It's mid to late September 2022 when I'm filming this. I was down for a couple weeks with the old Rona, even though I got like six shots in the brother. Some zombie kid at my child's high school infected everybody. Boy, that was rough. I'll tell you what, many of you have had it. Wish you the best. Man, that was one of the worst sicknesses I've had in my entire life. Anywho, I'm all better now. Still got a little bit of the fluish like symptoms, but I'm not positive, no zombie anymore. We're good. So, what do we got? Getting back into repairs. This comes to us from Mr. Chris. This is an Amiga 3000 desktop Rev 9. And uh, really great cleanliness. No ROM tower, standard everything, blah, blah, blah. Says the amber circuit doesn't work. Um, clock needs some. Uh, Love 2032 battery cell was put in it. And as you can see here, I'm going to zoom on into this bad boy. And normally around 3,000, the Varda sits here. And she just throws up all in this area. The amber circuitry up here with the four buffer chips, the RAM, color RAMs, phase lock loop, uh, hex inverter, blah, 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 your mom, video at one, video at two for the RGB, this guy. Yep, that thing. Anyway, so the battery. Not a lot of damage that I can see. Uh, looks like it was caught pretty early. Coin cell was put in. We do have the old sundial eyeball underneath there, if you can catch that. Uh, could potentially have some issues. Now, what's wrong with it? The clock doesn't hold uh, the charge or the battery's not being seen. I don't know. I have to look into it. Don't even know if it works. We're going to hook it up first, uh, get a preliminary. The user removed all the chips and reseated them. Now I'm hoping that that reseat would fix the amber circuit because sometimes she just gets a little crusty. A removal, reinsert, maybe some deoxid would clean that up. Uh, the user also replaced several of the larger capacitors, which is great. The 16470s, I don't know what brand they are. A couple of Nichicon blacks around here marked with a dot, kind of like I do with the red pencil or red sharpie. It's just so you know which ones you've done because there's like 48 caps on this board. So, on the old Sprint Layout Viewer over here on the nice new Dell 2410 number 2, uh, you're going to see that uh, I have the battery section loaded up in here. It's a super simple battery circuit mainly here negative positive we have one connector that runs to this 470 ohm resistor which i can't quite see because the battery is on the board right now so i'm going to remove it right. on this motherboard here the battery was put in here where am i right here and the legs weren't trimmed down a little bit on these clock chips when you put a 2032 in uh when you put it in there snip the legs down a little bit so she's really close. You don't want a long hang. You could risk poking through the plastic on the bottom of your board when you put it back in your case. Kind of a little important safety tip. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to use the Amiga Kit uh, DB23215. The reason I use this one versus the Commodore original one is the height difference. You can see this one is a lower profile. And when I would use this one on a board, uh, the 3000 is usually okay. But some boards, it will actually cause it to lift up the board. So habitually, I just use this one. And I always start with the RGB. My prism bracelet is on. You can maybe see the cord right there. 3000s will not boot without a daughter board in. So what we're going to do is put the daughter board in. And we need a power supply. Okay. 
turn the monitor on first and then we'll just hit the button uh, this has a 3.2 ROM in it so what will happen is with no boot device, no floppy, no hard drive we should get a burgundy screen with a flashing disk and then we'll try some SCSI options. Here we go now this is in RGB mode so it might take a second to come to life. Am I even on VGA? Yes I am. Okay so we have a 3.2 ROM screen now what I'm going to do is turn this off remove the VGA from the RGB port here and we're going to plug it into the amber thing right here on the 15 uh, yep, the VGA. Now this little switch here this is a uh, enable disable so right now in the up position she is disabled okay so that will uh, run it as 15 kilohertz it will use the amber circuitry so that'll tell me if amber even works here we go I do see some lines that means she's gonna pop up I hope all right, there we go. That is amber in 15 kilohertz. We're going to flip the switch. Bingo. Okay. Do you see this? This is what the user might have been talking about. I don't even know if the camera's going to the camera's going to try and correct this. The screen is going really fast. There is a small potentiometer right next to the amber circuit. All right, this blue thing where the old dill pickle is has a screw on the back of it. And that is a small phase adjustment for this. Now it's stopped. All right, so it could be a cold issue. Not like the flu. Just as it warms up, then it will be fine. So, no adjustment necessary. Amber's nice and warm. Agnes, warm. Denise, perfect. Paula, hanging in there. This has an OCS Denise in it. 8362. Should be an 8363 or 4. But it works. Still getting glitchiness. You're just not going to, it'll work. You're just not going to get the ECS screen modes. No big deal. Nobody really uses them anyway. All right, memory. We have 8 megs of RAM, 2 megs of chip. She's all good so far. We're going to hook up the Davoom Tivu to the uh, audio here. This is version 1.8. We should have the music mod song. I'll test the memory in a second. We're just going to go audio. Strong audio signal. It's still flaky shaky. Can you even see that? I don't know. 59.83 Hertz. Well, that's close. Okay, we're going to go battery backed up clock. We do have a clock that is detected. But, it's 1978. Uh, let's give the old RAM a test. Why not? Let's just do chip RAM first. Oh, oh, it's that trimmer cap. Watch this. Touch, 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 touch. You can even see that. This little VC70 here, this little turd. hate that thing. Yeah, it's got some crap around the end of it. That's what your, there's your issue with your V-Sync and your Amber. Look at that. I gotta have plastic screwdrivers to adjust that. Okay, RAM checks out fine. Okay, as you can see, it's 10.06. Let's see what happens. I got stuck with work stuff on a phone call, so perfect time for passing the, passing the time. That's the cold shoulder thing. See how she's kind of, eh. I'm going to flip her to non. There we go. Alright, CLA RTC. Meh, 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 meh. So, I'm going to take this thing apart, pop the battery out of it. I got to do a cap job on it anyway, and we'll continue in just a bit. Step one, like any good step, is the first one. We're going to remove this battery. This is a super big three pole mofo. So I'm going to actually go old school here and use the big old spring sucker, like Mona's granddad kind of thing. Here's our three points, one, two, three. 
I'm going to use the big old plastic guy. Got a lot of volume and suction here. Don't know if it's going to turn out because I'm kind of... Oh yeah. I went with a plastic tip so I don't have any damage to the board. Solder sucker stations. Sometimes people go in here little nuts. This should just come out. Now, what we'll do is this is from AmigaStore.pu battery. It's okay. I want to look at the traces because I want to see what's going on and why our clock doesn't work. So here is the top side of said battery area. Oh yeah, she's a little bit uh, janky. So what are we looking for in the battery area here? I can't really see on the lines with my naked eye. So what I'm going to have to do is probe out the points between these battery posts, this ground plane right there, and uh, mainly this circuit here. This yellow variable VC190 trimmer capacitor is a 22 to 47 picofarad adjustable uh, potentiometer. Whoop. Yep. Potentiometer, pretty much. Now the black caps, you can see black dotted caps are the user's replaced caps. They are 50 volt instead of a 16 volt. Normally that's not a problem as long as you keep with the same uh, microfarad rating. There's a little bit of greening still on here. I'm going to scrape just to get rid of the residual acid that's literally right there in front of my face. So we'll scrape that down. We're going to stay clear of the amber circuitry which is like right here right below it. We don't want to mess with any of that. And normally all of our clock issues are simply resolved up here. We don't have any major battery rot. Most likely it's one of these micro wires that go to the battery post. Hey, it's uh, 11 14 in the morning. Had to take a little bit of a breather for actual work stuff. So on the diagram of the Varda of death here, you can see we have the positive battery terminals and they run right down here underneath the glass beads over this 470 ohm resistor R192. But if you take an actual peek at the freshly clean sanded ish uh, little dude here on the lower left of your screen, you will notice that this hole, the Varda hole of doo doo, uh, doesn't have a connection here down. It does across, but downwards. She don't got no connection there, son. So I'm going to have to just do a little... We'll do it on the bottom here. That should get the battery backing up the clock because that is its primary and only connection. Without that little... That's your primary connection right there. And then from there it goes out. And or there's your trimmer cap down here for adjustment of time and the little crystal... Other than that, I was able to get all the green off the board in the little booger spot above the battery. I'm actually going to clean it to make sure the area is nice and clean. And then uh, I'm going to remask it with the solder mask. Now, this is probably going to be brown with rust because it was just left untreated. There's our crystal, by the way, the little aluminum can thing. Not, I was pointing to that, this thing. 32, 768 hertz. Yeah, I put a wire on right here. Just a loop, boop, from that battery positive to R192, the power pickup, 470 ohm. And uh, with that, I'm gonna recap the board with the rest of the ones that the user didn't do. There's some old Elena and uh, decouplings and some showies and 35 blah 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 I got them all we're gonna replace them with some, replace them replace them yeah replace them replace them with some brand new 2022 Nichicons let's first do a reassembly real quick and uh, just a quick and dirty and check out what our battery's doing okay let's go into battery backed up clock 1978 I know that's 2 13 a.m. but I'm just setting it to set it so save and exit turn off Batteries in. 
turn it back on via the mains go tech and that boots quick clock ta-da clock is holding the extended test would be a let's leave it off for a bit so right now 2.14 p.m. September 14th. I know this is set for 0 2 a.m. Close enough. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. I was just kind of taking a little admiration of this board, and I noticed something. You know in the past that when I've done 3,000 boards, I screwed up putting RAM in. And I've learned that the fast page static column mix match thing, you're not really supposed to do, but people do it. The newer Ramses can address the two different types of RAM and it doesn't really screw up. But I noticed if you have them in a weird order, like you're going to notice here, I'm going to try and zoom in across my big gut, that right here in the front, you can actually see that. Wow, you can see we have Oki Data. And behind it, we have Toshiba. Except, Oki Oki, Toshiba Oki, Oki, what are you? Come on, bag it out. Oki, Toshiba. Oki. See that? And then on this side, we got Toshiba in the front, and then Oki. Oki, Oki, Oki. What are you, sir? Toshiba, Toshiba, Oki. Uh, that ain't gonna fly. They gotta be in the right order. I'm gonna have to pull some of these out, which I hate freaking doing. Flicker. Alright. Um, RTC, September 14th, 215. 27. It's 225. We're running a little slow. That means we have to adjust on this yellow mofo right here. What you want to do is get a plastic tip screwdriver. I just happen to have one of these eye fix it mofs. And uh, I don't have a plastic tip screwdriver in mine either. But what I did a long time ago, and I'll share it with you, is I wrapped some painter's blue tape around the tip of one of these things. And that's my plastic screwdriver. So from there, what you're going to do normally is hook this up to an oscilloscope and make sure you're getting 32768 hertz, but I just give it a little twist. Now you can see the seconds ticking. That's good. 22733, 227. I know it's AM, but that's what we're working with here. Just for my brain, okay? Now, plastic tip screwdriver. Normally you would measure the variance from that cap to that crystal and get it right at 32,768 hertz. That is the uh, frequency of that clock, that little silver barrel mofo next to the clock. Okay, I'm going to leave this screen sit here as I flick it to amber and it's going to jiggle like Will Smith's getting jiggy with it, which is weird. You can't see that. That is so crazy. Look how clear it looks on the viewfinder. All right, it's getting jiggy with it. See that? Now, what I'm going to do is this dang thing's in the way. So is this. This trimmer capacitor right here. Watch this. I'm going to touch it. Just touch it. And it's better. I don't want to get it out of phase. It's hard to get a phase lock. That's your dual phase. Normally you have to set this into bypass mode and hook up some jumpers and Tristan did a really good article on it I've used in the past but I've kind of learned to just jiggle it until it works and then there you go proper hertz-ish you can make fine if I switch this to 50 hertz it's gonna raise the old screen up here in America and when I flip back to 60 it's gonna suck it over to the side because my monitor is a 60 hertz monitor and now it looks all weird see haven't even gotten to the capacitors yet this memory's got me concerned. Uh, 8 megs, 2 megs. I think the memory is in wrong, but we're going to see. I'm going to test the fast RAM. Good enough for me right now. Okay, so 2 and 8. Up one menu. Up one menu. Battery backed up clock. Still holding. 233. 233 on my clock. Where's my phone? 233. Cool, huh? Clock's fixed. I just want to see what the hell's going on with this thing. I haven't booted anything on it yet. Let's give her the old sysinfo disk. That's bootable and that will load a uh, set patch. And if it gurus, I know my memory's screwed up. Hey, is your memory screwed up? Yeah. Something's weird here. 
you're going to notice this one has a 70 nanosecond. This one's got a 80 nanosecond. Here is a Toshiba chip with an 80. And uh, they're hodgepodge through here. 70s, 80s. That's why. Okay, so that doesn't work. Locked up. Why? Because it has the wrong RAM in it. We can have 80 nanosecond in the front. We can have 70, but we don't have enough. So, I'm pulling this out. 70 nanosecond in that weirdo 60. And it'll work fine. Let's dig in the pile of stuff while that's booting and see what I got. A3000 zip ram. Let's see what I got. If I have it, I'll put it in there. Uh, 256K. I got a 256K. I have three 80 nanosecond Panasonic's Toshiba's. Three 80 nanosecond Toshiba RAM chips to try. Okie 80. You just got saved, buddy. You just got saved. Alright. Do we get past this? If this locks up, I'm going to have to pull this RAM out and this going to be it. Nope. We're good. Sweet. Holy crap. So, thanks so much. 8 meg. Two mega chip. Set patches on. It's got a boot HD setup 3.2. What that is is basically an install with just your basic hoopla. It's booting, it just takes a while. My phone goes off. Holy crap, my phone goes off. DF0 error is just buffers on the startup sequence. So special thanks to Mr. Lewis for those RAM chips. It makes two megs. There we go. We're good turning this off. Now that I know the Amiga is sourced proper, the bits and bobs are working, all of the pieces needed to function are functioning, it needs a recap. This part takes a couple hours. I'm not going to bore you with a recap. A lot of these have actually been done. So, recapping. So battery fix, single wire from the positive terminal to the first 470 ohm resistor that shoots it into the motherboard. A little bit of adjustment on the potentiometer, the 1622 whatever picofarad trimmer cap, VC190. Then we had VC470 up here, that was the trimmer cap for the amber system. Phase lock was out of phase, and a little touch on that made it work, so a little bit of uh, tweaking with the old paper tip screwdriver. Got that synced, also adjusted the rear hertz for the enabled 15 flicker fixer phase got that sorted um, found out that the RAM was wrong also missing a jumper on the RAM size so we put a red jumper on the RAM size 1MX4's moved the other RAMs to the front also removed the oddball 7060 weirdo fast page non page your mom page ah. RAM chips so that saved this board Great. Now we're going to recap. So that was your recap. Now I'm going to recap. This is 614 Helmet Goober. And we have the remaining 20 so caps. All replaced. Almost ready. This might not work without it. One. Oi. Bobble pop. Open it over the board. So any splatter will just go right on it. 25 megahertz. 6830. Amiga 3000 desktop, Rev 9, that's a little loud. Yeah, I put a hat on so my bald head doesn't glare. So that wraps it up for this Amiga 3000 repair fix recap and another Amiga has been saved. By the time this video comes out, the owner will have his Amiga back and hopefully be enjoying it, and that'll be awesome. So there you go guys, another Amiga has been saved. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you watchers and supporters for helping keep these things alive. You forgot one thing. What is that? You forgot to test the Zorro slot. We can do that after this is Sounds over. Good. So that, that is all we, we have today. for today. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for future, future updates. updates.
Thank Thanks you guys for watching. For watching. And I hope you learned something.